You're right, you're right. And then that's probably why I'm kind of finding myself in this middle. You know, I'm like, I really don't think I belong here. Even though I've been, you know, it's like conservatives are the good guys, you know, everybody else in a sense are the bad guys. But they're essentially doing the same thing the bad guys are doing. And like, like they as are far as self-interested. Self-interest you know. of what does this candidate give me? So we're recording, and then you can just line up with the mic, just mute it. Nice, man. Hey, you're a pro at this, dude. Let me get this one. We used to be live streaming, but now our live streaming crew is upstairs. But um, so you're at CPAC 2020. Are you getting what you wanted out of this? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay, talk to me about it. I well, really, I came here with uh, my my mom, my sister, and. Uh, I'm Ty, it's nice to meet you. Ty, I'm Jordan. Jordan, nice to meet you. Too. Jordan, are you getting what you want out of CPAC 2020? I am Ty, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I came here with my mom and my sister, and uh, our whole family has always been into politics. Like, my uh, parents, you know, were Reagan Re Republicans. So, kind of, so I got a lot of that in me and everything. But, you know, really my, my main goal was just to bond with my mom and my sister. You oh, know? wow. Really was, yeah. yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. I want to understand where you guys are coming from and be excited when you're excited sort of a sort of thing okay is that would you say that's close or am i off uh, about about you or like i want to bond with my mother and sister yeah they're political so i yeah. will learn more about politics inject myself into it so i can bond with them yeah it's that kind of thing even though i'm i'm very interested in it too but uh i guess i i don't see myself as like hard on one side, it's like it's like I I, I want to be. It's, a, it's like you know everyone's got the paraphernalia and the red hats and and uh, I'm I'm gonna vote for Trump. I didn't four four years ago, but um you know he's convinced me that I, I want to vote. I want to vote for him. What convinced you? Well, I, I guess I felt like he he's got a lot of just common sense. That I felt like he's been lacking for a, a long time and and the decisions that he's made. And when it comes to you know budget and you know handling money and dealing with other other countries and you know if we're not being tr treated the a way that benefits America then well let's maybe hold some people to the fire a little bit like let's get something out of it you, know? you have an example well uh, you know like as far as talking to different countries as far as like the you know what we put put into the, to those, those countries like with NATO saying you know like we we fund NATO more than anybody else and yet we felt like we're being kind of pushed aside on a lot of these on these ne negotiations and stuff and trade. So that sounds very logical you know, to, to, to me. Either if we're paying, we should be represented more, and if we're right. not, why are we there? You know, why, are, why are we or, paying? Yeah, right. Or start putting some pressure on NATO to yeah. represent us better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and that was enough to as a criteria for you to be like, you know what? This guy's pretty cool. I think I think eventually, you know, what it was, because I was always kind of on the fence. I liked his politics, but I didn't really like how he went, went about it. Mm. Tweeting and, uh, you know, just, just how he handles himself. And there's a lot there's a lot of drawbacks. And I'm like... What would a more ideal candidate look like? I, you know, somebody like a, like a Jim Jordan. Uh, Instead right. of a name, why don't you tell me like the attributes okay. that you're looking right, for? Right. Yeah. Somebody who... Because no one's perfect, right? No one's perfect. Yeah, so what's the attributes you're looking for now? Somebody who, who kind of like sees everybody for like their internal worth, you know, oh, who they actually whoa. are. Whoa, okay. I don't really get that a lot on the surface from, from, from Trump because he, he's all business and this is what he's going to do and he's got his shtick and people love it. But it doesn't, it doesn't really identify with, with me. Mm. And uh, something that Trump and a lot of Republicans don't talk about is how their politics can actually help the poor, help the oppressed. That's like, we, we kind of have left that be all the Democrats' territory. Mm. When even though I feel like our you know, Republican policies can be very effective, but we don't talk about it. I'm like, is that because they're not effective for helping the poor? Or is it because we just don't care? So know? what I'm hearing is, like, I want someone who... I don't think I understand quite like the um, sees people for human's worth, but I am hearing on the second part, we have Republican tenets and policies that actually do help the poor, and I just wish they were better communicated. Yes. And could be highlighted, maybe even... Not enforced isn't the right word, but advocated for? 
more strongly by a leader who is concerned with like the welfare of the poor right. at a more visible level. Right. Does that make sense? It does. Let me know if I'm putting words in your mouth. It doesn't. You could say no. That, no, no that's no, not no, at all what I'm no, saying, Ty. No. It's not putting words in my mouth. Let me tell you exactly where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> basically, I assume that Trump cares about the poor, but I'm not hearing it. You know, I, I hear you. And in an ideal candidate, you would hear that more. Yeah. That would that would light me up if, if I felt like, hey, we're here because we're trying to help those who cannot help themselves. But that's not usually a Republican tagline. Yeah, you don't really hear that a lot. Um, but I would imagine, let's say he comes in tomorrow and mentions that maybe like in 40 seconds in a 10 minute long speech, would that make you acquiesce even more so towards you? It would. Okay. It would. If you never heard it at all, if you never mentioned the poor, would you still say, all right, that's still something I wish you had, but I'm still voting for you? Exactly. Okay. Because I do think the policies are helping. But by, we, by the way we talk, it's like we don't really care about that. And it's like we're more so talking to people that have money and are all concerned about that our money being taxed away to help the little people, to help poor people that we don't care about. That's what I'm worried is the message of the Republican Party. I hear that too. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've heard like that mindset around here. It's like just work harder, or like yeah. pull up your bootstraps, it'll trickle down, right. etc. Eventually, yeah. What do you think would be a palatable way to express to a conservative, like a diehard conservative, that it benefits you to have poor people have a means of getting to closer where you're at, or like getting out of poverty? Benefits you to not have poor people in your country. Like, how do you sell that? I think that conservatives pride themselves on being patriotic and the American dream. Okay. And so if we sell the idea that, hey, we are in a crusade, a cause to help the poorest of the poor rise to that American dream, but we have to talk to them not just talk to the rich who are worried about their own pockets. I like that. I like I like that. So it's like, help me out. You're a conservative, you like America. Americans come in all sort of different brackets and, and, and colors and all that stuff, but we help Americans. And if there's an American that's struggling, we as Americans will be willing to help that person out. And why not help fellow Americans achieve the American dream and it doesn't have to be at a great cost I'm not taking anything out it will be a consensual thing among all of us and we'll agree to it but this is the time where we're asking for us to come together and help the poor and it helps everybody so we don't have to you know we can say that we can still talk to the rich or the middle class like hey this is good for you it's good for you and it's good for, for them why is it good for them it's good, for, it's good for them because, again, we're not taxing away all their income, but we're saying, hey, that when there are more people that are, you know, off of food stamps, off of, off of, of welfare, they're taxpayers them themselves. The government's getting more money without taxing you. Hmm. Hey, there's an interesting point. Yeah. And less motivation for the government to tax you because they've got more money now. Also, poor communities cause crime. If they weren't as poor, less crime, more focus on police to help in other capacities, let more teachers focus on teaching well rather than stopping fights at school, less drugs, maybe better border control, all that. All the things that you guys care about can be fixed if you focus on, to an extent, poverty in America and right. resolving that. Right. Why aren't conservatives following that right now? I'm worried they just don't really care, though. I mean, I, I think their policies help um, as far as as far as the I think the policies help, but they're not there in, in the heart of it. I think that the the idea of people rising up, having jobs of their own, and having that self esteem. Like I, I struggled in my career too, mm. and you know. Which career? I, I work at uh, a senior living place uh, okay. with, with old people. Nice. That's important. I help run activities. Dude, that's incredibly important. Uh, and so, you know, I've had a full-time job now for two years. But before that, I was just like hustling, you know, working three different part-time -part jobs. Mm. And, and uh, it sucked, you know, it was hard. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, having some somebody like speak to me, you know, about, hey, we got to get you that job. We got to get you that, 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 that career, you know. Um, because not only yeah did it help my pockets, but yeah it helped who I was as far as you know uh, being able to speak out, being able just to feel okay in my own skin. I dig that. Can I throw something else? 
Yeah. Do you think there's fear from Republican leadership from sounding like Democratic leadership? And if Democratic leadership is like, we gotta focus on the poor, we gotta focus on the poor, we gotta stop poverty, and Republicans were like, I don't wanna sound like them because I don't want fellow Republicans that I'm, I'm competing for for spots in office to say, he's, he's a liberal, he's a Democrat, so I'm gonna stick to our party script and just hope I win whatever I get off the party script. Maybe they do care about the poor, maybe they just can't express it for fear out of being called out. Is that a possibility? Does that sound reasonable? I, help me out. Maybe. I, I don't see it though, that, that way. I mean, I guess the way I see it is that over, you know, it's been like decades, like at least 50, 60 years, it's like the Democrats have been like, we're your party, you know, with LBJ back in, in the 60s with the Great Society and the war against, against poverty, it's like, hey, we're the ones who are fighting for, for you. Uh, but, you know, the Republicans were si silent on it all this time. And uh, so I, I think that the uh, Democrats have just okay. drawn people that are actually, you know, caring about the poor to their, their party. Whether their policies are helping or not, they've had the PR, the good PR, to actually get people who believe in the cause. And I think a lot of Republicans, uh, you know, not necessarily are bad people, but they're concerned about, hey, we have to be financially stable as a country and, and myself and, you know, they, you know, they're focused on business. And, you know, they probably are backed by a lot of corporations, too, that maybe don't care so much about the poor. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting no, drawn off the lines no, now. No, it, it sounds like there's, there's, there, it's easy to be disillusioned by any political group when you start looking at them under a microscope. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's a very nuanced problem, much more so. Do you think you're, I don't want to put this in a bad way, but I know you're trying to draw enthusiasm from this to better connect with your, your family. Yes. Do you think your family is applying the same amount of critical thought that you're using right now? <laughs> uh, I, I, I doubt it. Because it, it, it feels more rah-rah, uh, you know, for, for them than like, well, let's talk about this. Like, is this really the, the best thing to do? And maybe just because of where I am in, in my journey. And maybe they've had that journey already. And so, uh, but I'm still kind of coming to grips with it. So maybe that's, that's all it is. The way I find it is there's no excuse not to think critically. So even if there are, it's not a hill that I, I, I climb and then I'm, I'm done thinking. Well, that's true. I think it's just a steady climb upwards regardless. And I worry, I worry that even I can become complacent when it comes to challenging my own beliefs. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you, let's, what, can, I, can I ask a question? What is it from the other side of the fence or the what, whatever they call it in Congress? The, the aisle. Line? The aisle? Is they, they literally call it the aisle? That's yeah. so lame. You guys got, oh, there used to be a live stream camera here. You got to come up with a better name, guys. There's an aisle be between where the Democrats sit and where but the Republicans sit. There's more Republicans sit. in the, so they're yeah, on both yeah, sides of the aisle. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. so, I'm saying <laughs> the carpet? I don't know what it is. Anyway, um, is there a message from the other side that you find is a very compelling, strong argument? that Democrats come up with. Maybe something that could be ground for a bipartisan effort between conservatives. Let's say you have more political sway than you can than you have at the moment. What is being said on the other side of the aisle or the other side of the convention center that you find appealing to the point where you're willing to support it to even if you have to stand with a bunch of blue hats. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, I I honestly can't think of a current message from the Democratic Party but you know my, my favorite president is uh, JFK and something that who was it how old are you <laughs> he was before my time yeah, yeah he was but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I'm 30 that's fine that's fine <laughs> I like history though so oh I like history yeah history is cool my favorite history is like medieval kings I would be oh, like oh yeah, yeah. Henry the third or something like that <laughs> all right keep going I'm sorry okay so um Henry the third why I said that Henry the second Best one. All right, good one. I'm sure most people are not going to know the difference. It's uh, fine. It's fine. Right. I'm a nerd too. I thought I thought we were bonding. That's we right. are. <laughs> so Kennedy. Kennedy. Something that was uh, something that he he pushed a lot in the early '60s mm. was public service. You know, civic duty, mm. and really like getting involved in your government. Republicans have such an anti-government. Not asking what I can do for 
don't ask what my my government country can do for me. Ask, ask what not. What, yes, right, right. Yeah. And and that really speaks to me because I'm I'm very you know to me like patriotic in that sense of like yeah let's let's serve our country, let's you know and get involved in the government and that kind of thing. Well, I mean, that's something. That's a message that's not very well received, you know, in Republican and conservative circles. They're saying, "Hey, government's the bad guy." You know, make government, and and maybe government shouldn't be as small as it's still able to function. Yeah. But to be honest, we're, I'm sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. All right. Well, and and so you know that idea of public service and like, you know, government can be a good thing. Uh, doesn't mean every government program is a bad program. Sure. But we don't hear that from Republicans. And I do hear that from the Democratic side that a government can be a force for good. Mm. I was saying, don't ask what my country can do for me, ask what I can do for my country. Sounds very much like a conservative state sentiment today. You know, you are right. I'm really glad you pointed that out. Because, because I mean, basically, they might not say it you know, word for word, but maybe a lot of voters are saying, well, what can you give me? You know, Bernie, what can you give me? Free college. What do I get free, out of this? Yeah, what do I get out of this? And they're excited about that. And yeah, so that's why I say in a, a current message, I'm not enthused about it, but I'm really glad you, you pointed that out. Do you feel like the Republicans are more or less saying the same thing right now too? What do I get out of this if I have Trump in office? It's true, like they're saying more, more money in my pockets, good for business, the economy is great, you know, my stock, you know, bonds are doing great, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, it feels very self-interested and that's not very motivational. Mm. I feel like we're at, I feel like we found something. We did, we totally did. <laughs> and I'm really glad that you pointed out that really the, the, the message of Kennedy is really a conservative message in that sense of like how can, Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I wouldn't even say it's conservative. I feel like maybe not. Yeah, that right. was the tenure of what what motivated you, and or like even back then, or what you found appealing to yeah. Kennedy's rule. Yeah. And it's not something that you're seeing right now from either side to an extent. You're right. You're right. And then that's probably why I'm kind of finding myself in this middle. You know, I'm like, I really don't think I belong here, even though I've been, you know. It's like conservatives are the good guys, you know, everybody else in a sense are the bad guys. They're essentially doing the same thing the bad guys are doing. And like, like they as are self-interested. Self-interest and what does this candidate give me? And will he make me happy? And will he meet my goals? You're right. You're right. You're right. I don't really have anything else to add. I mean, really, that's that, I think I think you really helped me nail it. There. Okay. Yeah. I wish we could talk. Well, actually, we can talk again. We won't be here. Yeah. But this is probably good grounds to like be like consider this conversation a little bit maybe. My name's Let or my name's Ty. I'm working on a way to talk to anyone about anything. And one of the cool things about it is just asking questions to figure out how people arrive at the beliefs. And I do this on my YouTube channel and have a really fun time doing it. And there's a bunch of other people who do the same thing too. Yeah. If you feel like you'd like to continue the conversation, send me a link. We, we can chat. Thank you. I have a radio show. Do you? Uh, we can, there's other people I can link you to, but yeah, YouTube comments even. Yeah, it's all good. Ty, I think this is the highlight of my CPAC experience. <laughs> Conversations <laughs> that don't suck. We aren't lying. We're good at this. Yeah, We're sure really are. good at this. Sure are. Thank you so much for coming by. I really enjoyed this. Let me get you a shirt. I said I'd get you a oh, shirt. Yeah, right. What size shirt do you wear? Medium? We got plenty. That was fun. Um, when I gave him the shirt, he was like, you helped me understand why I believe things. I'm like, that's cool. That's really cool. That's like some of the best things you can hear. Uh, Another one? <laughs>